Welcome back, you guys. This week, we're going to be learning about my name twin, Patricia, Patricia Robert Harris. And for our book, we're going to be reading Magic Bones from the African American Read Aloud Stories. It's going to be an excerpt from the folk tales and fairy tales section. I hope you guys enjoy. Magic Bones. Two brothers could have lived happily ever after if they had not been so jealous and greedy. There once were three brothers who were left orphans during a great famine. When the youngest of them became ill, the two elder brothers did not know what to do. Then one proposed, let us take him into the veld and nurse him. Maybe he will recover there. So they carried him far into the bush. After some time, the two elder brothers again wondered what to do with their youngest brother, as he was not getting any better. It is a time of famine, one said to the other. We have no food. Let us leave him here and return home. When the sick one heard this, he pleaded, Please do not leave me here, alone. But they left him, and they went on their way. Eventually, the youngest brother recovered and began to set snares to catch game. One day, he set his snares on the site of an old village. Next morning, when he came to check them, he found an old man caught in one of them. He stood some distance away, afraid to go nearer, but the old man called out, Come nearer, boy, come here to me. When the boy approached, the old man asked, Who told you to set snares here? No one, the boy said, but I was hungry. How was I to eat? Put your hand into my bag, said the old man, and draw out my magic bones. The boy did as he was bid. Do you want some porridge? asked the old man. Yes, the boy answered quickly, for I am very hungry. Throw the bones and say, let porridge come forth at once. The boy did so, and behold, porridge came forth. As the boy ate, the old man said, I shall die soon. My name is Jadembimbira, which means jumping shin bone. Don't forget that name when I am dead, for I am leaving it to you. When you wander about, you will reach a wide plain. Throw the bones, and you will get a dwelling in all you desire. With that, the old man died. The boy wandered and at last came to a wide plain. He threw the bones, saying, Let there be a large village and lots of food. Instantly, a large village full of people appeared. Many came out shouting, Jidimpimbida, begging for food, for there was another great famine. Now the two brothers who had left their brother in the bush heard from others that there was a chief named Jidimpimbida who had plenty of food. So they decided to go to him in hopes of obtaining something to eat. The chief saw them coming, clapping their hands in salutation, shouting, Jidim Pembida! He gave each a bowl of milk and asked them to drink, then said, Have you forgotten me? I'm your youngest brother, the one you left in the bush. When they heard this, they wept. We left our brother in the veld when hunger overcame us. Please forgive us. Then the chief gave wives to each and said, my brother, stay here and live with me. Look upon this place as yours. At first the brothers were very happy, but after several months they became envious and said to each other, Why should our younger brother be chief when we are the elders? They went to their brother's wife to find out the secret of how he had obtained so large a village. They flattered her until she told them the secret. While Jim Pimpita was away cultivating his fields, the brothers begged her to show them the bones. If you let, if I let you see them, what will you give me? She asked. Whatever you desire, they said. If you bring me the flesh of a hare, I will show you the bones, she replied. They readily agreed and immediately went away to hunt. Soon they returned with two fat hares for the woman. She gave them the bones, telling them that if they reached a place they liked, they were to throw the bones and a village would appear. The brothers ran away with the bones. When they came to a suitable spot, they threw the bones on the ground and asked for a large village with much food. Instantly it appeared. Then they threw the bones a second time, saying, Let Jadimpimbira's village disappear. Immediately it vanished, and Jadimpimbira found himself all alone. Jadimpimbira lamented, My brothers have got a hold of my magic bones. Again they have left me all alone. Just then, Gonzo the rat appeared. Why do you cry, Jadimpimbira? He asked, I cry for the loss of my bones, which I know my brothers have stolen. Then Nagabi, the, the hawk, who happened to float over him, asked, Why do you cry, Jidimpimbida? 
I cry for the loss of my bones, which I know my brothers have stolen. Then Gonzo and Gabby said, Do not cry. We will get the bones and bring them back to you. Nina and Pimpita rejoiced at this and told them he would be most grateful for their help. What will, we, what will you get us in return? They asked. Anything you desire, he replied. Well, I want chickens, Nagabi answered, and I want nuts, said Gonzo. The rat ran along while the hawk flew high in the air. When Nagabi reached the village of the two brothers, he hovered in the air waiting for Gonzo to arrive. Gonzo was sure that the bones were being kept in the largest house. He crept in and scurried up the wall. He nibbled through the string by which the bones were being tied, and then carried them outside. Once, the out once outside, people began to shout. The chief's bones are being carried away by a rat. But just then, Gabby swooped down and picked up Gonzo with the magic bones and flew away. When people saw this, they cried out, Toko, well done. The rat is being carried off by a hawk. Of course, they thought the hawk would eat the rat. The hawk carried Gonzo and the magic bones to Jadimpimbita, who thanked them for what they had done, then threw the bones and said, Let there be nuts and chickens for Gonzo and Gabby. When he threw the bones again, saying, I want my village and all I had returned to me. His village and its people appeared. He threw the bones again and said, May the village of my brothers be scattered and no trace of it remain. And no one ever heard of or saw the two brothers ever again. Patricia Robert Harris was born in Mattoon, Illinois in the year of 1924. After finishing high school, she attended quite a few colleges, including Howard University, University of Chicago, American University, and George Washington University Law School. After finishing schooling, she took her first official job as the director of the American Council on Human Rights and was the assistant director of the Civil Rights Agency of the American Council on Human Rights. She would continue to chair and co-chair a couple other organizations as well as being named the, Un the U.S. Ambassador of Luxembourg in 1965. And she would be the first black woman to be awarded this role in the history of the United States until 1967. In the year of 1969, she was a full professor at Howard University and was a dean as well until she resigned later that year. She would move to work at the NAACP on the executive board and the Legal Defense Fund for 10 years, from 1967 to 1977. Patricia was then nominated by President Jimmy Carter for the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development in 1977. And then she was nominated to take over the role of Secretary of Health Department and served that role until the year of 1981. In the end, she practiced private law and became a professor of law at George Washington National Law Center. She would lead a life that would open doors to normalizing black women in positions of power. Thanks again for joining me this week, you guys. I hope you guys learned something new. And if you did, please comment below. Let me know what you learned. Please share, comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And comment below if there's anyone new that you want me to teach you guys about. I would love to hear you guys' input on any videos that I have. And that's all I have for you guys this week. So I will see you guys later.